I want to make the point as clearly as I can that Joe Biden and Anthony Blinken have blood on their hands. I mean, they are drenched in blood. Now, what am I talking about? Can anybody tell me of any other president in American history who gives aid and support, billions of dollars, to our enemy, to our enemy who has killed American soldiers in Iraq, to our enemy that has created all kinds of mayhem in the Middle East, to our enemy who's now attacking our armed forces in the Middle East and attacking our allies, that's trying to build an Islamic caliphate throughout the Middle East. What kind of a commander-in-chief of the United States of America waves economic sanctions, whether it's oil, commerce, finance, banking, you name it, against a regime that sought to assassinate our former Secretary of State and our former National Security Advisor. Who the hell does that? Can you name a single president in American history, a single Secretary of State, since we've had Secretary of State? Go back to Jefferson. Can you name one who would ever arm our enemy? I have another question. What kind of president, what kind of a Secretary of State would appoint an individual who is pro-Iran, who is a Marxist, who is a special pleader for Iran, to negotiate a no nuclear deal on our behalf against that regime, and then in turn would hire three staffers, one of whom is a potential spy for that regime, and that envoy had his classification yanked and is under investigation, and the information is being kept from the United States Congress. What kind of a president of the United States and secretary of state appoints such a reprobate to represent the United States? What kind of a president of the United States and secretary of state refuses to trigger what's called snapback a few weeks ago to prevent Iran from being able to make, buy, and sell missiles. That's happened, too. What kind of a president of the United States and secretary of state arm our terrorist enemies, arm Hamas? Donald Trump said no more money through the U.N., UNRWA, to Hamas, which the U.N. won't even call a terrorist state, won't even call a terrorist group, so they continue to get money. Trump cut it off. Biden and Blinken, the money's pouring in again. What kind of a president of the United States and secretary of state fund Arafat's PLO with hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars with no conditions whatsoever and refuse to enforce the Taylor Force Act, which tells the Palestinians you don't get any money from the United States unless you stop killing Israelis, killing Americans, for which you give pensions, it's called slay for pay, to the terrorist families. So what do we have here in Biden and Blinken? Then, what do they do in turn? They tell the Israelis, look, we want the hostages out. They take no responsibility for the hostages. They just paid that regime, the Iranian regime, $6 billion for hostages. Oh, uh, and by the way, uh, we don't really want you to win the war. We prefer a stalemate, maybe a ceasefire here and there, maybe a permanent ceasefire. Hamas isn't going to honor a ceasefire. They're a terrorist organization. They don't honor anything. And they even said, this is a dry run October 7th. We're going to keep at this until we get what we want, the, the obliteration of the Jews and the Jewish state. So a ceasefire is a surrender. Oh, and what else? Keep sending fuel and medicine and food in there. We now actually have Palestinian citizens telling Al Jazeera Hamas is stealing everything. They're taking everything. Well, who's the referee in Gaza to make sure they don't? There aren't any. And this administration keeps putting the, the pressure on Israel to capitulate, to be nice about the war, to make sure you don't really defeat the enemy, just kind of box them in. In other words, Blinken and Biden take no responsibility for what they unleashed in the Middle East where we had the Abraham Accords, where we had peace breaking out between Arab and Muslim countries and the Israelis, where the Iranians were in a box. In fact, they were collapsing. The people were rising up. Where Hamas was in a box, where Hezbollah was in a box. They were all in a box! Until Biden and Blinken come in and unleash the whole damn thing. 
And now it's Israel's fault. Israel's attacked on October 7 in horrendous ways that we don't need to keep describing. And now Israel's considered the, the aggressor. You have this Marxist fraud, Bernie Sanders in the Senate saying, well, they should not get any funds, or we need to condition the funds. Israel must do that and that. And then finally, a two-state solution. While this war is going on, while this war is going on, this, this two-state solution that's pushed by Thomas Friedman at the New York Times, another Israel hater, that's pushed by the Democrat Party, that was pushed by Obama, is pushed by everybody. There was a two-state solution. It was called Gaza. Look what, it ha look what happened. But as I've said here before, the two-state solution for Israel is the final solution. Why? Because you need to understand what the Islamists want. It's a caliphate. It's not a two-state solution. Iran has a state. Are they satisfied with their state? They've all but taken over Lebanon. They've all but taken over Yemen. They're in the middle of taking over Iraq. They've all but taken over the Gaza Strip. They want a caliphate, and not just in the Middle East. They're building nuclear weapons, or the, the effort to build nuclear weapons, that's not for their neighborhood. That's for our neighborhood. And what are we doing to stop them right now? What is the plan? What is the strategy to stop Iran from getting a nuclear weapon right now? On Biden and Blinken's watch, there's nothing to stop them, which is why they're racing to the finish line, because they know they have friends in the United States State Department. And they know that as in the 1930s and 40s, the Israelis have many anti-Semites in the State Department, and many of them are still there. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.